Welcome to Bon Voyage TV. This is episode two. Thank you to everyone that watched episode one. We had a lot of fun making it. We know you're out there because you've been watching and commenting on Facebook, so thank you for all the input. And quite a few of you have been watching on YouTube. We're lucky enough to have Olivia has agreed to come back again. Yeah, Welcome back, Olivia. And speaking of numbers, we've doubled our guest numbers this week. We have two guests. We're going canal boating in Europe and we want experts of course on this show so we've brought in Le Boat, the largest canal boating company in Europe. Welcome Cheryl, Thank welcome you. David. Thank you, Thank you for agreeing to come on. Now, Cheryl it's your first visit to New Zealand I understand. It is and it's welcome. very exciting for me. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you here. But David you've been a number of times I think. I have indeed and what a wonderful pleasure to be back and uh, to be able to talk tonight about uh, canal boating in Europe. Excellent. Now, as I said, you're the largest canal boating company, so you better uh, tell us how many boats you have and where they are and what type. Well, it's our pleasure to tell you all about uh, Le Bort. Uh, Le Bort is the largest European boating holiday company in the world. We've got 900 boats. Uh, our biggest cruising destination is France. And I guess the big exciting thing about Le Bort is anybody can come on holidays with us. No experience needed, no license required. So Le Bort is a beautiful holiday for any types of families, couples, groups of people, and it's a great way to really experience the waterways. So how does it work if you don't have a license for a boat to drive the boats up the canal? I wouldn't think that would be very safe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I guess it sounds quite uh, frightening, doesn't it? But uh, we've got 900 boats and there's thousands of customers that travel with us every year. So you turn up at one of our bases. Uh, we give you a full briefing on the cruising ground, the health and safety sides of our boat. Uh, we get you on board. We talk you through the boat. We show you how to work the boat. And then we take you down to your first lock. We take yeah. you through your first lock and then we say goodbye yeah. enjoy yeah. yourselves and it's that easy oh wonderful it Sounds is easy because we picked up this boat uh, at a place called set right down mm -hmm. in the south of france and um we took off we did go through uh, a good briefing procedure yeah. so mm. we knew what we were doing we got a well we thought we knew what we we're doing yeah. <laughs> so we uh, went through the first lock and uh, about an hour later we we're coming into the first town we saw the town we knew where it was so it came to a fork in the canal. We just kept going straight ahead and the lovely f uh, villagers were waving at us and mm -hmm. talking to us mm -hmm. and mm. they got louder and louder yeah. and then we realised they were trying to warn us that we were about to hit a dam, ah. which was right in the middle of the village. Yeah. So that's, that's when you stop. <laughs> we, we managed to stop, but uh, oh, yeah. that was the only real trouble apart from um, uh, tail ending a Swiss-German couple yeah. in one of the locks. Yeah, yeah. They got a little bit upset for the rest of the day. We kept following them through locks for yeah. about four hours. Yeah, yeah. Boating is a very, uh, it's a great holiday for families to all be together. Mm. You know, in this day and age, you know, the kids are maybe off at a kids club or heads down in the iPads, whereas on a boating holiday, you're all mucking in, you know, mm. you're having to help to tie up and moor, you know, mm. off in the morning on your bike to go and get the baguettes to have breakfast. So it's a, it's a very good holiday in this day and age to all to be together and, yeah. and, and, and be as a family, you know, Absolutely. so it's 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 great experience. So you brought up um, kids driving the boat, is there, for the hire, is there an age restriction of sort of minimum age for the... We do, uh, it's 17, it's kind of like a car, you know, um, but the minimum age technically is 17, mm -hmm. but obviously under supervision, uh, you know, the people can all have a go at it but uh, you know obviously when you come into locks and other areas it's probably best that the, the adult does, yeah. does, yeah. does, doesn't take control. Or in our case maybe not. Yeah. Well maybe yeah. not you know so uh, but it, it, from this part of the world I mean we do get a lot of uh, groups of friends that will go 
you know, so they're probably touring through France for a month and one week of that maybe cruising on, on other boats. Mm. So these canals have been there for quite some time. What's the, what's the history behind them? Well, they were originally built as the sort of the freeways. Uh, it was way to get from A to B and the Canal de Midi was to go from the, the Atlantic through to the Mediterranean. And uh, so all the townships were built around the, yeah, okay. around the canals. So now you're off the beaten track and for the tourist, it's wonderful because you're cruising through these medieval towns and uh, one of our bases is uh, through the Canal de Midi, you go through Carcassonne, which is a, which a walled is a, city. That is a fabulous place. It is, and uh, yeah. you know, you, you can get guided tours, there's fantastic restaurants and this, and it, it was actually where they filmed Robin Hood, uh, the, the movie, so it's, uh, yeah, it's a spectacular, wonderful place. And so, um, do these canals, can they link up to other countries? Can you travel, you know, say from France through to Holland or Germany? Well, some of the countries do li uh, link up. However, most customers would take our boats on average for about a week to 10 days, maybe two weeks. Mm -hmm. So you'd find most people would cruise maybe two to three hours per day. So it's mainly sections of France, sections yeah. of Germany, sections of Holland and so to do country for, to country you probably have to spend maybe about six months with us yeah. well, that sounds all right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're more than welcome yeah. yeah and so when you're cruising along and you moor up in a beautiful village how would you go about exploring these beautiful places that you're visiting so i guess just imagine being a family or a group of people on holidays and you wake up one morning everybody's got bikes so we're also one of you know, the largest bike hire company in Europe as well oh, wow. so you would jump off the boat and then you would explore the town one of you is getting up first thing in the morning to find out you know where you're buying your fresh baguettes from your croissants mm -hmm. you're bringing them back to the boat you're having breakfast on board uh, and then maybe you'll do a few hours cruising then you're jumping off again you're exploring the beautiful villages the shops the local cuisines you'll be you uh, buying your meats your wines and your cheeses and of course that's a fantastic experience in France but it's just wonderful to explore you know cycling down the vineyards going to the wine caves I mean it's uh, very special isn't it, is. it? Mm. and I think you know pre-engines the, the canal boats were all pulled by uh, the horses so it's very flat area for obvious reasons because it's canal so it's mm. very easy to cycle so all ages can do it and we actually do have bikes for all ages so from the teeny tots where there's a, a trailer bike, you know, so you can sit in a little carriage uh, with mum and dad cycling ahead. Uh, so we try and make it for everyone and it is a whole part of the holiday experience. I mean, the boat is there to, to get you from A to B, but there's so much to do and see around mm. the canals. Mm. And know? so how long can you actually moor up? Can you be there for a couple of days or do you have to be in and out pretty quickly? Oh, you can be there. I mean, most, a lot of uh, the clients from this part of the world probably do a, a one way. So obviously you, you have to keep going. Yeah. Mm. But normally with the itineraries that we've designed, it gives you, as Cheryl just mentioned, it gives you about four hours or three hours cruising and then another three to four hours of being able to go and explore. We give enough time to be able to do without having to rush, you know, and mm. really... Because mm. the boats only go seven k's an hour, you know, oh, so it's, it's a very <laughs> relaxed way of travelling. Yeah. And Olivia, one, those, one of the advantages of those horse tracks is mm. that it's dead flat so other people can be driving the boat you can go for your run oh, as you okay. like to do you can go for your run and be you'll probably beat the boat, the boat. <laughs> that's right so you go and wait at the other end yeah and hop back on the boat oh, yeah. perfect and you've come back from your run so you'll need a, yeah. uh, obviously to get freshened up so yeah. what's on board the boats in terms of facilities uh, bathroom kitchen well, on the, on the new boats that we've got, I mean, it's all en suite. I mean, it is a, a proper cabin uh, with double beds that can be split into twins uh, with a separate shower, proper flushing bathroom, toilet. Mm. Uh, in the saloons and kitchen area, we have stand-up fridge freezers, uh, fully fitted kitchens with all your pots and pans. Um, we've got outdoor barbecues with a sink and yeah. cold fridge to keep your meats. So, and we do encourage that because obviously if you're going through all these areas, you can buy fantastic fresh produce 
yeah. every day from the market. Yeah, so, that's what you want. And so it? after you've yeah. done your run, you can then enjoy a nice meal and then think of your next run to work <laughs> off the beautiful meal you had the night before. Yeah, so, gorgeous. yeah. Well, thinking back to years ago, we were, um, we'd uh, do our own breakfast and lunch, but every evening we managed to be tied up near a village. And I think at the most we made maybe walked 100 metres oh. to some of the best restaurants I've ever been to. Uh, uh, and that's right, you know, it's, uh, it, it's really quite special because, you know, you're going into these, you know, beautiful little towns and you, and you don't expect to see so many nice uh, sort of boutique type restaurants, but they are lovely. And you're eating in some of these towns for about a third of the price that you would pay in Paris. So yes. it's, and it's a lovely experience. More traditional. Yeah, mm. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, now you, you did mention price, so the viewers are probably asking, what does all this cost? So, David, you're the money man, I believe. G give us an idea of what we'd have to pay uh, from New Zealand. Yeah, well, for a, a leading price, uh, sort of in the, the, the off-season, so to speak, or the start of the season, as, as little as $500 per person based on six people travelling for a week. So that's, that's three couples would be about wow. 500 per person. Per person, week. yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's your... That's your uh, transport and accommodation you know and obviously as Shell just mentioned you know the prices are, are very cheap for eating out and also buying the fresh produce from the market so yeah. it's an extremely economical holiday. It's I want to go again now. I, I want to go again now. It's a terrific yeah. experience. Yeah. So I'm definitely do going to do it again. Thank you very much for coming Cheryl and David and if you want to know more about La Boat and where you can travel uh, have a look at our website, we'll have a fact sheet there and of course you can call us at Bon Voyage Cruises and Travel 0800 266 869 and get canal boating. Thank Thanks you. for coming. Thank Thanks very Thank much. You. Thank you. crush on Graham Norton, so we flew all the way to his place so he could have a crush on us. <laughs> Graham Norton's own Sauvignon Blanc, Southern Hemisphere Grapes, meet Norton Hemisphere Fab. Welcome back. Uh, earlier in the week we uh, brought Tony Smith from Windstar Cruises into the studio to talk about Windstar. So welcome Tony. Thanks Stuart. Nice to have you here. Thank you very much. Now, you're New Zealand's representative of Windstar Cruises. That's correct, yes. They are a little bit different because it's small ship cruising. Yeah, definitely, definitely small ship. And the ones we're particularly going to focus on tonight are in Tahiti, the Wind Spirit, which is really a cruising yacht. So It is, yeah. It's got, tell your us sails, it's got your sails. Um, sails are, are um, out every time it, it, it is actually underway um, from when they depart from port. Um, and uh, they unfurl them as they as they sail away. Um, they they are used while they're sh on the itinerary yeah. um, uh, with motor. But on the last day of the itinerary, when they're coming back to Papiti, there is a, a period 
where if the winds are right, the ship will actually sail. So the engines are all turned off and the ship sails. Yeah, I saw a bit on um, their website where even um, even if they're motoring, yeah. the sails will be adding about... Yeah, they do assist. Yeah, yes. the sails yep. are sort of 30% yep. of their total power, yep. so yep. pretty eco-friendly as well. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And it looks good. Uh, it does look good, yeah, especially it's when you're on board as well. Yeah. yeah. So many of our descendants will have arrived in New Zealand on sailing ships, so sure. this is uh, something we sort of have to do. Yeah. So in Tahiti, um, it's a seven-day itinerary. That's and correct. And if we're doing it from here, how does it work? Well, from here on the um, package that you've got tonight, um, it's a, a flight up to Tahiti on a Friday, and you leave here late afternoon, arrive um, late Thursday night, very early morning Friday, you have a night's hotel accommodation. Yep. Um, you have the morning with breakfast and that at your hotel. Um, we then transfer you about 12, 30, 1 o'clock down to the port where you join the ship to all your formalities. And then basically you're on the ship for seven days visiting all the various islands, Bora Bora, Maria, those, those islands throughout mm -hmm. um, Tahiti. And then back again on the following Friday, we have a night's accommodation, transfers, etc., and then fly out early on Saturday morning. And, and then you're home on Sunday about lunchtime. Sunday, so it's... Yeah, it's a good, it's a good week, good week's yeah. itinerary. Just one um, week away from work. Yep, yeah, especially in the summer month, uh, winter month. Sorry, mm. um, although Windstar is now from May year round in Tahiti, so it's a yeah, big commitment. It is a big commitment, <laughs> but um, it worked last season, so mm. they've now committed to year round in Tahiti, which is great because you've got all your Christmas cruises and all that sort of thing available as well. It's a fantastic destination. I've, oh. been, I've been a couple of times. I haven't um, sailed apart from just on a couple of ferries and things there, but. Just the beaches and the... Oh, it's the lovely. Work. It's it's. I have sailed it, mm. and, and it is one of the better itineraries that we definitely have with, with Wednesday cruises. Yeah. So um, I think on this itinerary you sail on the Friday from Papiti. It's a very short hop across to Murea. That's correct. And you're waking up the next morning, you're right in the heart of it. Yes. And uh, when the ship's at anchor, one thing that's different with these sailing yachts is they have a sports deck at the back. So if you want to... Uh, you can see the, the video of this now, but if you want to explain what happens. Yeah, they have a water, water sports pl platform at the back, and uh, all non -motor, all non um, all water sports, should I say, except diving, is complimentary. So when you get on board, you can uh, get yourself snorkel and um, fins, so that you can keep them in your cabin, so that when you go ashore, you can just... Okay, just, you've always got your own, so just it's handy. got, got yep. your own, yeah. Um, and that's for the whole cruise, and then um, from the back, they've got, uh, you can swim off the back, um, there's kayaking, there's um, uh, sailing, there's um, water skiing, so there's all sorts of, of water sports and they've got water sports um, people on board that look after and stay down there um, to ensure everybody's okay, so safe and that and they've got ropes hanging out in case you're swimming around. So if you don't know, like you know, everyone's, everyone, the, the in thing now is stand up paddle boarding, so if yep. you haven't done that before there's no, someone there right. to tell you how to yep. do it. Windsurfing, that mm. sort of thing, so it's all there. Oh, excellent. And they do have uh, a good diving program on board as well for those that are interested in diving. So it's really your um, Hauraki Gulf, uh, yeah, it's Nola your, it's, Sound. It's, it's, <laughs> it's go, go there for Cruising. a week, it's yeah. your, it, treat it like your own personal yacht, mm. and you've got all the facilities there for you. One of the differences between doing this on your personal yacht or you know, a friend or family's yacht is you're not really going to have to contribute to the cooking and cleaning. No, so no. All that's tell all, us about the food. All that's done for you, they have uh, Filipino staff on board looking, looking after you in the bars and, and in the staterooms. Um, and then the food, you've got uh, choices, uh, one restaurant for breakfast, um, and that's up in the um, upper deck, and right. so you can dine al fresco, so you can dine outside, and there's nothing nicer than coming into port and you're having a nice breakfast on the outside, it's uh, 23, 24 degrees yeah. outside, um, you're being served your breakfast and, and it's a, a really nice, and you can do that for lunch as well, um, and then for dinner, you've got a choice of restaurants. Even though it's a small ship, they have got one or two different okay. restaurants. So you've got your main restaurant on the on the lower deck, which can seat everybody at once if they want, but it does okay. come at any time from about seven o'clock in the in the evening. And then there's a, by the pool, they have a grill restaurant, which seats 25, yeah. um, and that is reservations, but nobody can eat there more than once. So they try and give everybody um, the opportunity to, to dine there. It's a steak grill restaurant. And the El Fresco um, restaurant in the evening is a restaurant as well um, that, you, that you can go and dine at as well. So we've, we've arrived in um, Bora Bora, for example. Yes. And what's going to happen during the day? Well, Bora Bora, you, you've got the, the day to go ashore and, and enjoy yourselves. Um, I, 
I believe they've got a, a deal with one of the hotels so you can go to the, the hotel beach there okay. and, and, and enjoy yourselves. Um, the good thing though is around Bora Bora they also have a private motu. Um, so one of the days there, um, the ship actually stops there and everybody goes ashore. They take all the water toys ashore and everybody spends the day on this. So it's just for the Windstar? Or private island for yeah. the Windstar people. Right. Um, and they, they have a deal with one of the hotels that come across. They do all the barbecue and everything. So you have a nice barbecue lunch. There's a bar and everything there. Yeah. And it's just a great, enjoyable day on your own private island in Tahiti. Wow. I oh, know. <laughs> it is a wow factor. Yeah. yeah. There's only 148 people on board anyway, so it's not going to be a huge um, amount of people. No. And um, the amount of people, because of the smallness of the, of the vessel, make a lot of friends that way as well because everybody actually interacts with yeah. each other. So it's pretty casual. It's Very casual. Not, not a dress up. Thing not a dress up. No. There's no, no need for jackets and ties and anything like that. There's no bad. formal nights. There's a captain's cocktail night where he introduces all the staff and, and all that. Entertainment in the evening. They normally have a duet in the main lounge. Um, they, they may have a, a, a fun karaoke night up, at, up by the pool one night mm. um, on a sea night or whatever. But... Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a more relaxed atmosphere. Just take a week off and chill. Well, you know, of course we want to go. And uh, Andy, our director, has just said he, you know, he's, yeah, he's pretty keen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we made a sale without even, even yeah, um, the show anything. going to air, yeah. So you've, you're being Tony Smith, you've come along with a deal for us. So um, Yeah, the deal, deal, Gerard, is it's a fly cruise package of what I was explaining before, the flights, transfers, and the hotels, and seven-night um, package up there. We've got it for your viewers for 3,999 per person um, in the lead-in category. Um, and there's only two categories on yep. board. And, and then there is a business class and an upgrade to a um, higher category if people want available there for yep, them as well. That's a pretty sharp price as well. So, yep. And that's exclusive to us, isn't it? It is exclusive to you. Excellent. Thank and you. It's a, but it is only a limited period and there are only limited sailings that we could do that on as yep. well. So you've given a, I think you've given, a, uh, given us that deal for four sailings in yes. June and July, yes. which was great because it's just, just the, the start of that getting messy cooler, part of winter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And uh, imagine telling your uh, friends and family you just, uh, you're just you off for a week in Tahiti. Exactly. Be great. So that includes uh, airfares, transfers, uh, all your meals on board, yes. and I believe uh, non-alcoholic drinks are included at any time that's, as well. That's correct. And of course, with that uh, pre and post hotel, pre yeah, one night before the cruise, one night after, and with that sports deck out the back, you can do virtually anything. Scuba diving is an extra charge. Yes, virtually everything. Everything included. you want to do, yeah, yeah. It's um, it's an ultimate holiday. You just think of that big pool out the back of the ship. Oh, that's great. So I'd like to go. So if you uh, are ready to hop on board uh, the Wind Spirit in Tahiti. The cruises are 12th, 19th, 26th and of June and 3rd of July. Um, as Tony said, it's an exclusive deal for Bond Voyage Cruises and Travel, at, uh, starting at 3999. It's a great deal. Um, call Jill or Steve at Bond Voyage Cruises and Travel. The phone number's there, 0800 266 869. Details are on our website, of course. And uh, Tony, thank you very much for coming, and thank you for the special deal. Fine. Thanks, thanks Stuart. Thank you. Small, intimate, unique. Being on a Windstar cruise is like being on your own private yacht, where freedom is the order of every day, casual elegance is the style of choice, and the world's most enchanting places inspire the voyage of a lifetime. This is like nothing you've ever done before. Windstar Cruises, 180 degrees from ordinary. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that little sojourn around Tahiti. And with the rain this morning in Auckland, I certainly woke up thinking I'd rather be on one of Tony's boats. But mm. we're here. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, you must have sailed around Tahiti, Olivia, in all your yachting days. Oh, no, unfortunately, I haven't. It's actually quite rare to be able to get onto a yacht that's going to the South Pacific. You have to be quite lucky. So I missed out on that one. But I live in New Zealand, so I'm not far away. Well, I'll talk to Tony and see. Oh, that would be nice. You might be able to. If they get short of crew, you could step yeah. in. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now, what have we got on the news? Oh, the news. Okay, so today we are first of all talking about a spot in Spain. Uh, it's been described as the uh, world's most dangerous path, and it's been closed for over a decade. 
and will no longer be off limits to the public thanks to a massive reconstruction project. I've heard about that. I think that sounds quite high. Yes, apparently it hangs 100 metres above the Guadalhoche River. It's been around since the early 1900s and was originally built to provide access to two waterfalls for hydroelectro workers. And when you think about that and you see these pictures, fixing it now is bad enough, but 100 years ago building it, how did they do that? Oh, I'm sure there was <laughs> quite a few fatalities, I imagine. <laughs> and over the years, as the boardwalk deteriorated, um, there was a string of fatal accidents I told in, you, it's in 1999 and 2000. Uh, so the government demolished the access points to the walkway. The most famous section includes the Balconcillo de los Gaitanes Bridge, which spans the Gaitanes Gorge. We are told to say it takes between four and five hours to walk the entire route. So you'd be able to run that, wouldn't you, Jared? You like your running? I don't know if I'd run it. <laughs> <laughs> Not on that. I'd be, Not that high I'd be crawling along <laughs> holding, the, holding the wire. Yeah. Yes, and some of it is quite steep, apparently. Um, entry will be free for the first six months. So well, there you are. Get quick. there in the next six months if you're keen on that one. Yeah, sounds good. Next. So we've all taken the odd soap bar or little shower cap from hotels. No. No? Not me. Never? <laughs> Uh, okay, but, okay. <laughs> but some, well, ho have. some hotel guests go a little bit bigger with more expensive items like towels and linen and that sort of thing. Um, and hotels, I think, expect us to be a little bit light fingered with these sorts of things. Well, they? they're there. They sort of look like they, they almost say, take me. Yeah, and they're <laughs> just little itsy bitsy bottles. It's not like you can really refill those <laughs> ones too easily. Uh, but however, some items, more unusual items, have been swiped, including a suit of armour. A two-piece leather lounge suite. Well, that's handy. <laughs> how do you put that in your luggage? Yeah, exactly. I don't know how you get it out the door. A Christmas tree, a model of a Concorde, and in fact, I do see a little model of a Concorde that, behind you at the moment. That Gerard. was not from a hotel. That was paid for. It oh, okay. came last week all the way from the United States. All right, we believe eBay. You. I didn't pay any GST. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so even hair dryers, kettles, and crockery, which is bizarre. A travel lodge survey noted that some guests take, it, take a liking to their curtains, mirrors, <laughs> light fittings and carpets. You decorate your whole flat. <laughs> While a Las Vegas hotel owner has reported that one guest had cut away all the carpet in his room. <laughs> that's probably not theft, that's probably more, you know, one of those bachelor parties. Yeah, I was going to say, I imagine he wasn't quite himself. <laughs> take it with us, it's easier <laughs> cleaning. Uh, so when you're a funky design hotel like the QT in Sydney... <laughs> the QT Hotel does deserve a special mention. It is really well done. It's a historic building and what they've done with it, the interior design is that someone's given them a blank checkbook. They've gone yeah, crazy. Yeah, just so stunning. You can see from these images that yeah. they've spent a bit of money. So the QT then, um, obviously losing their, their stuff people in their be, room. People will be taking you know, it. Yeah, so they have come up with a menu of items you can purchase. It goes from $9 to $90, and in the little menu is subtly placed just on the desk in each of their 200 suites. Yeah. Next to the do not steal, you can buy. Yeah, <laughs> and it's aptly named Desire. <laughs> so what smart. can I get? So, uh, not your old run-of-the-mill hotel goodies, actually. At the QT Sydney, we're talking ceramic animals, an arty hand mirror. Those are really cool. Are they? Yeah. Ooh. And a cocktail shaker, coffee mugs, shoe horns, coat hangers, eye masks, a tray, and even bathroom glasses. So yes. Oh, that's the <laughs> that's the glasses rather than the glasses. Yeah, not those glasses. <laughs> the glasses in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah they, they have some neat stuff. And you can see it. I just love the shot of just the shot of the bathroom. Mm. Look at all the ornaments and things in there. Lights everywhere. Yeah. It's, re it's really quite stunning. It's a really great idea as well because then you can see how it would be placed in your own bathroom the way they've got it all set There's out. There's probably people go there and they go home and they're doing yeah. grand designs all yeah. over their house. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, really well, cool. thank you, Olivia. You're welcome. Well, that's the end of episode two. We're very close to it. So we've nearly made a whole hour of television between us. Wow, very I impressive. told you it'd be easy. <laughs> Uh, we've got a great show coming up next week, but if you want to communicate with us, we'd love to hear from you. You can email me, gerard at bonvoyage.co.nz, or go on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash bonvoyagetv. Um, let us know anything you want to know about, anything you'd like more information on, things we've talked about, 
uh, just contact us and let us know. Now next week we have a great show coming up. We will be talking to Viking River Cruisers and our special guest next week is Judy Bailey. Yes, the well-known newsreader. Um, what you may not know is Judy is uh, doing a little bit of travelling these days and she's led a couple of tours for Bon Voyage Cruises and Travel and this year she's going to Cuba. So we'll find out a little bit about her trip to Indian Sri Lanka last year and find out what's coming up for her Cuba trip. As you know, the Americans are going to be starting to go to Cuba very soon and if you want to see it before it all changes, you need to get there in the next year or so. So that's it from Olivia and me. Thank you, Olivia. You're welcome. And we'll see you next time. Bon voyage. Bon voyage.